And I'm Stone Phillips. Long holiday weekends. We try to make the most of them, spending time with family and friends. Making the most of every moment together is a lesson the remarkable young man you'll meet tonight knows all too well. The challenges he and his parents face might seem overwhelming to many people, but not to this family. And you'll soon see why. Here's Rob Stafford. <laughs> Once you learn about this little boy's battles, you might think every day of his life would be a brutal uphill climb. But Seth Cook would say he's having too much fun to complain. He considers himself the luckiest kid in the world, with great parents and the coolest dog around. No matter what the obstacle, Seth seems to find a way to pick himself up and keep coming back for more. This is your new mark. Above all, this is a boy in a hurry. I can never get moving. There's no time to waste. For Seth Cook, life is too precious. Oh, I beat it. I beat it. That's it. The record. A nonstop joyride that could end any time. We both know, all three of us know, it's, you know, inevitable. It's going to happen. And we just have to be as ready as we're, we can be for it. I do believe that God chose us to raise Seth. I don't think this was an accident. Seth's mom and dad, Patty and Kyle Cook, were off and on high school sweethearts from the tiny logging town of Darrington, Washington. It took me moving away to realize that he couldn't live without me. <laughs> In 1992, they got married, and not long after, Patty got pregnant, something she discovered on her 21st birthday. Happy birthday. Oh, yeah. <laughs> it was the best birthday present I'd ever gotten. Seth Anthony Cook arrived on July 22nd, 1993, with blonde hair and blue eyes. He looked like a really healthy baby boy. He had good coloring. He just was a cutie. So you two have everything you want? Yeah. yeah. Seth was the picture-perfect baby, or so his parents thought. What was the first sign that something might be wrong? By three months, we were starting to get concerned. Hey, buddy, what you doing? Seth's skin started to tighten. He was losing his hair, and he couldn't gain weight, despite a hearty appetite. And we had grandmas and <laughs> grandpas and trying to help mm -hmm. put weight on him, too, and it wasn't working. Nothing was working. Doctors in Darrington and elsewhere were baffled. Then, before Seth's second birthday, an answer, but not the one his parents wanted. Patty was home alone when the diagnosis arrived in the mail. What did the letter say? Well, the letter said that it's progeria. Progeria? Progeria. Which meant Seth would never grow up. He would just grow old at an astonishing rate. Victims of progeria, like these children, essentially have the bodies of 70 and 80 year olds, in many ways resembling their own grandparents more than kids their own age. And they face the same serious health risks as their grandparents, catastrophic heart attacks and strokes that can happen any time. An extraordinarily rare disease, there are only about 40 diagnosed cases of progeria in the world today. Back in 1995, when Patty read the letter disclosing Seth's diagnosis, it laid out a bleak future. Heart disease, thinning of the skin, loss of hair and loss of bone strength occur in childhood or early teenage years. Currently, we have no way to halt these changes. I was in shock. It had to be the l loneliest moment I think I'd ever had. You know, I thought this wasn't going to end well. Do you feel like just going into a, a corner and crying? Well, I think I did a couple of times. For support, Patty and Kyle sought out the Sunshine Foundation, an organization that grants wishes to sick children. In 1995, Seth and his mom and dad attended Sunshine's annual reunion for progeria kids and their parents. How did you feel these children looked? They looked aged. Weak. It was hard to look at the older kids and see what tomorrow had in store for us. But Seth has made it easier for them just because of the kind of kid he is. He was no different than anyone else in his own eyes, in his own mind. And he was really eager to learn things and, and he wanted to go. 
he was ready to go. 100 miles an hour. 100 everywhere. miles an hour, everywhere. He learned to walk before he could crawl. So right away, Seth is a boy in a hurry. Yes. Mm. Do you think there's a reason for that? Oh, yeah. I, I don't think he ever, at any point, was ready to see life pass him by. <laughs> 